All right, give him the opening statement from the coach, and then take questions after. So raise your hands, please. Yeah, before I start talking about the game, I just want to address the situation at the uh, under eight media timeout the scuffle that happened next to our bench. So, so I've known Coach Gage for a long time. I was a high school coach. He was one of the best recruiters in the country. I have all the respect in the world for the job he's done as an assistant and head coach. Before he got to Missouri as a head coach here, you know, he had one of the best first years in the SEC since I've been here in, in a long time. So it is no disrespect to him or his program. I apologize to both Coach Gates and Aiden Shaw. And I, Aiden seems like a great kid. And uh, it was an unfortunate situation, but I apologize to both of them. So, uh, I wanted to address that before we get going. Second thing I want to say is I thought for the weather out there tonight, I thought our home crowd was unbelievable. So I want to thank the students publicly. I think we had almost 3,000 students in there. We needed them. They got loud when we needed it, you know, for for a time when everybody could have an excuse to stay in with the weather. They chose to come out and support us. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to our players. It means a lot to the program. So. I want to make sure I thank them. But get into the actual game. You know, Missouri gave us everything they could, handle, everything we could handle. I thought the way they closed the first half, you know, was great on their part, and it wasn't very good on our part. We, you know, we had too many turnovers. We didn't guard. We, we've had issues with our starts to games. I didn't think our start was great tonight. You know, I don't think we got stopped to the last possession of the first four minutes before the uh, under 16 media timeout. You know, <clears throat> then to close the half, I, I, they, they went on a big run. I think it was 12-3, if I remember right, in the last four minutes. So, and it, you know, start of the second half, we were a little better. But I did think the one issue that we've had major problems with this year, how we play at the under 12 and under 8 of the second half, we were significantly better. So we've had issues. We've had leads in four of our five losses leads of six points or more in the second half. So I thought we did a good job closing this thing. You know, and you kind of look at some of the guys that were on the floor. Ryland obviously went on that three-point barrage, which was huge. But I thought, you know, he's been one of our best defenders all year. Aaron's been one of our best defenders. You know, Trelly been one of our best perimeter defenders. And then, you know, Grant. And then Nick, Nick was playing well tonight. You know, he might not have showed up necessarily with, I mean, you know, he ended up with, 10 points and three rebounds. So statistically, it didn't look like great, but he played a lot of minutes, stayed out of foul trouble. You know, for him to play 27 minutes, only at one foul, you know, I thought it was great. And he impacted shots at the rim and did a good job for us. So, you know, the group that closed the game did a really good job. You know, Mark tweaked his ankle in the first half, fought through it, made some buckets for us early in the second half. And then, you know, with us, Tried to get him a little rest there at the under eight in the second half. And then we kind of went on a run and just kept him out and tried to rest rest his ankle and make sure he's ready to go uh, Saturday at Tennessee. So, questions? Nick. Yeah, I mean, you talked about that moment in the first half, but overall, I mean, this game was, was chippy and there's a lot of edge in, in the entire game. I mean, what was behind that? And what can your team take away from a game like this? You know what? I, I think. It's a program with a lot of pride. I mean, they had, they were good last year. They're, they came in 0-3. They're, they're probably better than 0-3. You know, they're, they're fighting, scrapping, clawing. Those players didn't go there. You know, start 0-4. Coach Gates was used to winning. I'm sure there was an edge about them where they needed to win. But we're trying to win the league, and we need to win. You can't win the league if you don't protect your home court. So I think combination of us understanding we got to protect our own court. It's a must must win game for us if we're going to try to win this league. And, and they, they have a lot of pride over there. And they, they weren't trying to start a 1-4. Other than that, there's nothing there's nothing between the programs. Like, I, I, I actually really respect Dennis and think he does a great job. And I don't think any of our players said any past history than our guys. I just think it's two teams playing hard, understanding it's a big win either way. Uh, Riley gets 16 there in the second half. What was it that got him going after halftime? It's a good question. I, I, I don't know. We kind of rested him there at the beginning, and he came off the bench after we rested him. I kind of went over to him on the bench, like, man, we're going to need you to win this game. you got to get 
like down, he's always good, you know, he kind of, you know, he had a defensive uh, mistake early in the half, and maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. He, he wanted to look at the, we got the iPads, and at the time out, he gave, gave up a three. I think he sat down and got his mind right. He's a kid that sometimes just needs to be left alone for a minute, he got his mind right, and sure, he came in and was ready to go. That shooting barrage is probably the best shooting barrage I've, I've seen out of anybody on our team this year. And I'm serious, there's had a few. at Strata in game one was really good in the first half, but that, that's as, as good as I've seen in a while around here. Tony. You guys really fired up against South Carolina for the comments they made, and then this game seems like you guys were fired up. Are you playing with the, does your team have an extra chip on its shoulder this season? Do you notice that? Uh, that's a good question. I think the five losses kind of got us, you know, we're, nobody's really paying attention to us, which is great. They shouldn't. They shouldn't be. I mean, we're not, we don't have enough quality wins for anybody nationally to pay attention to us. But I think after being number one in the country last year, you know, we got nine new players. I think a lot of these guys came in with the expectation we're going to be a top five, top ten team, and we're not. And we, and we don't deserve to be. Like, we, we got to rattle off a bunch of wins before. Anybody gives us any kind of respect, so I think they they're fighting for some respect nationally. But there's there's nothing really, you know. And even South Carolina, I mean, I, Coach Paris, great guy. Like I've known him for a long time. Uh, there's zero animosity, anything. You know, I think guys playing hard. You know, and the South Carolina guys, I know that they felt a little disrespected by their pick in the league, and I would too if I said they got really good players and they're going to finish better than 14th in my opinion. So I just think it's two teams, both games, guys are really going after. We gotta do a better job. Not, you know, Grant's technical. I mean, that's not even Grant, if you know Grant, he's not a trash talker. He's one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet in your life. So I think the game just get raised and I'm, I'm not opposed to the intensity level get raised. I think it's great. We just gotta, you know, from the head coach down, we gotta maintain our uh, composure when the intensity gets raised. It ended up being the only three he took, but how big was it for Grant hit that three at the beginning of his game to kind of get his confidence going again in SEC play? Yeah, I think it was good. I mean, the ball moved well. His feet were set. took it. It was all net. You know, he shot four or six from the field, four or four at the free throw line. I mean, he was a kid that was shooting almost 95% at the free throw line and kind of went through a little struggle there at the line. So maybe that three helped him get his confidence. He spends a lot of time in the gym, a lot. Like, so expect him to play well, but you know, we, we been on him to be better at some of the other stuff where he can impact the game. Rebound, you know, he led the team in rebounds. Him and Aaron both had eight. You know, he had two rebounds away from a double double. I think he's starting to do more of that. Attack the rim. You know, he attacks the rim, gets the free throw line. He doesn't miss many at the free throw line. So I, I was happy to see it drop and it might have got his confidence going a little bit, but I think you're going to see him attacking the rim a lot more and not shooting as many threes maybe what he had in the past. In the back of Chase. Coach Estrada was four assists, two turnovers tonight. When he's handling the ball well and seeing the floor well, like he did tonight, like he did against Vanderbilt, how, how much of a difference does that make to this team? Uh, big difference. Like, we need him playing like that. I mean, he's capable of being one of the best guards in our league. I mean, I think he's a guy that's going to push triple double. Fairly frequently, I mean, he was on pace. Almost, he was one assist away from being on pace at the half. I know he had, I think, seven, six, and four at the half. So you know, he didn't end up with any assists in the second half. But you know, I, I look at him, four assists, two turnovers. You know, Sears had a good night, six assists, three turnovers, both two to one. Ryland, three assists, one turnover. You kind of look at our guards and how they were moving it. They, they did a better job. Graham was three assists, one turnover. So kind of our main handlers, you know, were positive assist turnover ratio. We need that more often. We still had way too many turnovers with 13, but it, it, it was a little better there in the second half, particularly when we went on our run. When we went on our run. What does it say about this team to be able to close out the game and even extend the lead with Mark Sears on the bench, who has kind of been your closer uh, towards the end of the game? Yeah, I think it shows people we got a lot of depth. I mean, we've got one of the deepest backcourts in the country. When you got a guy like Trelly coming off the bench, who could start just about anywhere and, and plays his role great. And, 
you know, dives into his role, you know, you're able to put him out there for any of those three starting guards and not really lose much. So I think Estrada stepped up. We needed him to be great late in the game. I think he needed to get his confidence going, playing a late, great in a late game situation. I thought he was. And shoot, Ryland, I mean, we had three really good guards in there. Now, hopefully Mark can get his uh, ankle right because he is the leading scorer in the league, and we'd love to have him at uh, Tennessee because we, we need everything we can get to uh, win up that play. It's not an easy place to play. Two more, Dean. Uh, can you talk about the impact of Mark Sears' three-pointer in the second half that kind of sparked that uh, quick scoring run? No, we needed it. We needed a spark. You know, he's a guy that's made big shots for us all year. For him to suck it up and play with the sprained ankle and try to tough it out, I thought it showed a lot. And you know, I think that one came from the Grant having the post and kick it out. If I remember right, that was that was big. We need, we needed the ball to be moving. We needed guys to start making some shots. I think. He starts doing that, he gives some confidence to our team. So that, that was a big shot to help us kind of start to go on a run to open that game up a little bit. Last one, Ben. Uh, we saw you guys finish with a 35-23 rebound advantage. Uh, was that a focus going into this one, and uh, how did that impact the game? It was. We thought we could, you know, out-rebound them on the offensive glass. We weren't great early. You know, Estrada was had four of our six on boards in the first half. We needed some other guys, you know, get in there with them. You know, second half was a lot better. You know, we had five on boards in the second half, and Aaron didn't have any of them. So, you know, guys like Grant, Grant, Nick, you know, Ryland got in there and got some. So I think we can be a great rebounding team if we put our mind to it. But we got to have, we got to have everybody rebound it, both sides. So. Yeah, that was definitely a point of emphasis going to this game. Like it'll be at Tennessee. I mean, if you can't rebound against Tennessee, you're not going to be able to beat them. So we, we need some Mississippi State, super tough team. I thought we did a pretty good job on the glass there. So we've had some games here in conference where we've done a decent job rebounding the ball. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.